In this part of the series, I will discuss with you the ultrasound evaluation of the hip. Again, I will review positioning for the patient. We will also discuss some of the basic anatomy and demonstrate the ultrasound anatomy and also talk about some of the clinical correlations. To perform the ultrasound evaluation of the hip, it is critical to have a transducer that is able to penetrate to reach deeper structures. I would recommend a transducer of, of at least 8 megahertz or lower. The patient is lying on the table with the heels together and the toes externally rotated of approximately 15 degrees. When always performing the ultrasound, you want to do the evaluation in both a longitudinal and a transverse orientation. You can even do a dynamic examination with the feet and I will demonstrate that to you as well. The basic anatomy of the hip will focus mainly on the articulation of the acetabulum uh, and the femoral head. Also remember that you have several bursa surrounding the hip, for example, the trochanteric bursa and the iliopectineal bursa as demonstrated here. With the further dissection, you can see the articulation of the femoral head with the acetabulum of the hip. You can also even identify the three different bony structures that involve the hip. But for rheumatology and for musculoskeletal ultrasound, the biggest area of interest is going to be the articulation of the femoral head with the acetabulum. There are only three ultrasound scans when analyzing the hip. There's an anterior longitudinal scan, an anterior transverse scan, and a lateral longitudinal scan. So let's first demonstrate the anterior longitudinal scan. So the first view of the hip will be the anterior longitudinal scan. As I discussed with you, the patient will be supine. Her heels are placed together with the toes externally rotated of approximately 15 degrees. I usually like to palpate the trochanteric region and then move in internally from that to identify the acetabulum and the femoral head. In this case, on my Logic E, I have the 4C probe and have it set at 4 megahertz that allow me to penetrate and detect those deeper structures. I also have my focal points of around 4 centimeters. Remember that you also always want to identify your bony landmarks. And in this orientation here, you can see the femoral head surrounded by a nice thin layer of articular cartilage. And above that area, this hyperechoic region is going to be the joint capsule. Notice that I'm angling my, my probe a little slightly oblique. If we angle it the other direction, I'm able to pick up more of the acetabulum and that you can see on this portion here. So we go back and bring up that image to reveal with you femoral head, articular cartilage, the capsule, and acetabulum in this region. Now we'll go back live and to look at those structures again. In patients with osteoarthritis, you will not see this smooth border. You will see some ruffleness and actually even some spurs, and in many cases will not be able to detect the joint space because of the narrowing. So femoral head, acetabulum, this is the joint space, and this is going to be the capsule. One of the nice things about ultrasound is performing needle guidance. And if I had a patient that I wanted to administer medication to, I can easily look at the ultrasound image and know that I need to be about three and a half centimeters down to be able to um, administer medication directly into the joint space. You don't want to be above the capsule, a lateral or medial to that, but with using ultrasound guidance, you're able to direct the needle directly to the point of interest. Let's now look at the second image of the hip, which is the anterior transverse image. This is a simple image. Again, we have it in our longitudinal orientation, and as demonstrated on the cartoon, we just want to rotate the transducer 90 degrees. And now we are picking up those bony structures in transverse orientation. So here's a portion of the femoral head. Acetabulum is going to be medial to that. Other deeper structures, uh, sometimes physicians are wondering about if you're going to be getting to the neurovascular bundle, that area is a lot more medial than where we are over the, um, the hip surface. 
so there's no concern in actually hitting blood vessels or nerves when performing needle guidance. So now that we have completed the evaluation of the hip, I would like to discuss with you the, the difference in using the different transducers. For the first two portions, I used the 4C, which is a curved probe. This is a lower frequency probe and is able to pick up deeper structures. For example, if you have heavier patients, you want to evaluate deep structures of the hip and other structures as well. The 12L, a linear probe, is actually ideal for picking up more superficial structures. And again, I demonstrated how you actually can change the frequency and showing how that changed the depth of the images that you attain. So one of the nice things about the logic system is having the flexibility of being able to use various transducers to suit your patient profile. The third and final scan performed on the hip is a lateral longitudinal. This is a very simple scan. You just want to palpate the greater trochanter and put the probe directly over that area. I had talked with you earlier that when it analyzing the hip, you want to have a low frequency probe of around eight megahertz. Here on the logic, I have adjusted it using the 10 megahertz probe, and we'll show you the difference as we go from 10 megahertz to eight megahertz. In normal individuals, there's very little pathology that is identified in this area. The biggest thing that you will see in someone with any symptoms is gonna be a trochanteric bursitis. Remember that the bursa is a potential space, so you will not see any thickening fluid areas in normal individuals. But if a patient had trochanteric bursitis over the area of the greater trochanter, which is this hyperechoic region right here, you'll begin to see a compressible anechoic region of fluid. These are all the muscle stru muscular structures involved in the lateral hip, and really the only area of concern is gonna be over the greater trochanter. So again, in this case, we have the transducer set at 10 megahertz. I have my focal points to highlight right over the area of the bone, which is the greater, greater trochanter. Just to demonstrate what could happen if we change our frequency from eight to 10 megahertz. So this is the image focusing on the bone at 10 megahertz, and I will dial it down to eight megahertz. You can see that you do get more of a background material there. And one of the nice things to demonstrate to show what happens when you change the frequency, as I increase the frequency, remember the higher frequency looks for more superficial structures. So as I go from 10, eight to 10, to 12, and to 13, so we only focus in on the superficial structures and lost all the deep structures. And this is why when performing the hip exam, eight to 10 megahertz is really where you want to focus on. And finally, to give you a few clinical correlations. As with other areas of the body when performing ultrasound, the ultrasound evaluation of the hip is a deal for picking up synovitis in patients with inflammatory arthritis. You can also look for areas of effusions, and this is critical, especially in patients after having a hip replacement and who cannot undergo an MRI evaluation. I just talked about bursitis, particularly the trochanteric bursitis. You may also identify areas of bony pathology. For example, patients with osteoarthritis where you will see bony spurs or osteophytes. Calcifications, crystal deposition, like with uric acid, or pseudogout deposition, you'll be able to see those as well. And finally, I think when evaluating the hip, the ideal things about the ultrasound is performing needle guidance. Patient with hip pain, if you identify pathology, the ultrasound makes a very nice tool to perform that evaluation. So the take home message when evaluating the hip is patient positioning, making sure that you have a transducer that is low enough to reach the depot structures and actually performing a dynamic examination.